What if I told you there are seven specific boundaries in dating that will land you far more conscious, committed, and emotionally mature men while simultaneously repelling guys who are a waste of your time? What if I told you that beyond their impact on men, these boundaries will make dating far safer for you and help you reconnect to your value and your worth? Well, today, I'll be revealing what these boundaries are and better yet, how you can pull them off. I want to talk about boundaries for purposes of this video as something simple, the guidelines or limits you set to feel safe and respected by others. Now, very important distinction. Boundaries are not demands, which means you're going to have your say and if a guy doesn't want to meet your boundary, you're not going to force him or twist his arm. You're simply going to disengage, discontinue, or completely stop saving him. Now, the cool thing about these boundaries, the beautiful part about you stepping into the kind of person who can say, here's what I want and need, is that they will allow guys to step up to the plate and play the game differently, be more conscious in the prospect of dating you, or step down, meaning self-disqualify themselves. If part of the reason why you're not setting these boundaries is because you're afraid that if you set them, no guy will want to continue connecting with you, then I'm here to tell you that after working with so many women in so many different walks of life who've actually gotten what they want through setting boundaries, that some guys will actually show up stronger and find more value in you as a result of you having the courage, the clarity, and the value in yourself to set these boundaries and really uphold them. That's the second part of the boundary. If you've set the boundary, but there's no consequence if it's not met, then the guy's going to learn is not really true that you're setting that boundary. The first boundary that will massively start attracting conscious men, awesome men, and will fend off guys who are time wasters is what I call the root boundary. The root boundary says something like this. I only choose to engage in conscious dating with men who have a similar outlook of dating, who have a similar end goal in mind, and who don't have a deal breaker sign that shows up. So that means that before you go on dates with guys, you're going to do a little bit more groundwork. You're going to have a conversation with a dude. You're going to have a back and forth with a guy where you ask him, tell me, John, let's say the name of the guy is John. Tell me, John, what are you looking for in a relationship these days? If a guy wants something different from what you want, probably not the best sign for you to continue dating. If a guy wants something that's vague, then time to clarify. John, I love that you want a serious relationship. Tell me a bit more about what that means for you. When he expresses what he wants, then that gives you more insight into should you invest more time in getting to know him or is this a clear sign that he wants something different? There's going to be also questions that allow you to figure out if there's a deal breaker. If you're at an age where you still want children and that's a must for you, then you would ask the guy before you go on a date, what are your thoughts on children? You're not saying, do you want children with me? That's a little scary and maybe even creepy for him. But if you say, hey, what are your thoughts on children? The guy says, yeah, you know what? I have a couple and I'm not looking for more. Or I don't have any kids, but I'm not looking for... That would be a guy that you don't want to continue dating. So here's the first thing that will eliminate so much of the heartbreak that's going on out there. If you take a little bit more time to vet men power free and to only go on dates with guys who have a similar vision for what you're looking for, what that's going to do is it's going to land you fewer dates, but better quality dates. The second boundary that's going to help you to attract amazing guys and fend off time wasters is going to be what I call the elevate communication boundary. That means that in this day and age, because of the nature of how things go, because of the invention of the internet and dating apps and all that good stuff, there's going to be guys who haven't necessarily learned how to go from the dating front into the outside world. And what you're going to do is when you have a guy who's connecting with you and he's getting to know you in his mind through the app, the boundary of Elevate Communication is I choose to communicate with guys in intimate and safe forms of communication. So that means that if you vet the guy properly, you've asked a few questions back and forth, two, three, four, five times, anything beyond that is going to start becoming a projection and a waste of your time. So my suggestion would be setting a boundary that says something like this. John, I love that you're asking great questions. I'm someone who prefers to connect outside the app than texting. If that ever is something you want to do, let me know. Okay, you're not saying you're wrong for doing this. You're not saying I'll stop connecting with you or else. You're basically saying, I want to connect with you in a better format. Now, if he chooses to just connect that way, guess what happens? You don't need to continue communicating with him. But if he says, you know what? Yeah, let's go on a date. 
then you're going to go to the third boundary, which is what I call the date shock eliminator boundary. Okay. Date shock eliminator boundary is one where when the guy says, Hey, let's connect, let's, let's meet up. You say, great. I'm interested in getting to know you as well. I would love to first have a video call with you. Why would you say that? Well, because there's a lot of stuff going on out there. And while you want to give people the benefit of a doubt, you also want to respect yourself and be safe. So a video call is going to make sure that only guys who are serious are going to show up. Guys who are gimmickers or players are less likely to show up on a video call, especially if they're a scammer, for example. You can definitely eliminate scammers because they real rarely want to show their face on video. But let's say the guy shows up in video, you're going to get a gauge for who the guy is. There's something far more powerful and palpable that happens when you see someone in this medium than if you just hear someone. You can make some assumptions about someone, but when you see the way they look at you, the way they move, the way they breathe, their facial expressions, their actual face, does it match the picture? You have a lot more data to base your decision on, should I want to connect with this guy outside of this interaction? So that video call is going to be a short thing, five, 10 minute stops. It's not meant for you to decide if you want to marry the dude, simply to make sure that it's not going to be a shock, a horrible shock for you when you go on a date, maybe because the energy was really creepy or because the guy looks nothing like his pictures or because there's something in the way he communicates that makes you feel unsafe. Now, the fourth boundary that you want to establish if you want to attract amazing men and fend off guys who are time wasters is what I call the physical contact boundary, which means that you're going to take longer to connect with a guy physically so that there's time to develop an awareness if there's compatibility, if there's emotional connection, and then the physical contact will gradually grow. So how would you set something like that? Well, the guy wants to hold your hand or he wants to grab your leg or he wants to go for a kiss. And instead of saying, dude, no, you're wrong, you would say something along the lines of, hey, if this is true, obviously, or if it's not true, don't say it. I really find you attractive. At the same time, I'm someone who takes longer to connect physically. Why? Because I really want to make sure that when I connect physically with someone, there's more compatibility and that there's something beyond just the physical attraction that's making us connect. I'm looking for something deep and connective and I really love physical contact. Trust me, I just take a little longer. Does that work for you? The guy says, yes. Guess what happens? He's going to pace himself before he continues doing that. If he doesn't pace himself, then you can eliminate the connection and move on. Now, before I share my last three boundaries, which are really important to know, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not aware of the root cause where you're still single. What I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every continent, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and help them to attract the kind of connection that stands the test of time. And I've put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. It's going to share two things for you. Number one is the elusive answer to the question why you're still single. And number two, a custom report is going to share, based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description and you'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll get those two things. The answer to the question and the custom report. The fifth boundary that you can set if you want to attract better men and fend off time wasters is the non-exclusivity boundary. That means... I will not date you exclusively until we both find out that we're compatible and we want to take that risk of cutting off everybody else. So that means when you start connecting with someone, you would share something along the lines of, hey, something that makes me feel really comfortable and safe when I date a guy is that he understands that until we determine after some time of getting to know each other that we're the real fit to connect together, I'm going to be dating other guys. The guy can like it or not like it. If he doesn't like it, but he says, I'm willing to do it, Great. Continue exploring. If he says no, as a matter of fact, because I asked you on one date, I'm the owner of your exclusive time. And if you can't do it with me, then I'm out. Then he should be out. Because what happens when you give your heart and soul to someone you do not know wholeheartedly, it just means that you're going to have a lot more pressure to make it work. You're going to put a lot more pressure on him. You're going to maybe waste a lot of time unnecessarily because at that same time that this guy shows up Maybe great for the first two dates. You'd be dating two other guys. And by the third date, when this guy chooses to disappear or ghost you, you have something else going on. This is also going to make him show up stronger, knowing that he can't just show up with his charisma and make it work. He needs to put in the work to connect with you, to get to know you, develop some emotional intimacy, and then be able to get exclusivity with you.
sixth boundary that's going to help you to fend off time wasters is going to be the sex boundary. The sex boundary goes something like this. I'm really attracted to you. I really would even love to have sex right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't have sex with anyone who is not my boyfriend. And it takes some time for me to connect with someone at that level. So if you want to connect with me, we're going to do that without having sex in the process of getting to know each other. Again, the guy probably won't love it, even if he's conscious, but he'll understand that that's something you need because sex is far less safe for you than it is for him. So he's going to understand that you need more time and that you really want to develop that emotional connection. It's also going to allow him to show up strong and to develop those different levels of intimacy that are not just sex so that by the time that happens, it's far more specific, more special. And that he's not just going to run away because there's more skin in the game emotionally. Seventh and last boundary that you can set if you want to connect with far better guys is the emotional intimacy or vulnerability boundary. And that boundary means that you will only engage in connection with someone who is also willing to be vulnerable with you. That doesn't mean he emotionally gets naked the first day. That means that he's going to take the time when you share something to digest it and then be safe for you, if he's making fun of the things you're sharing that are vulnerable for you, he's breaking that boundary. You need for someone to be emotionally open. That boundary also says that the guy is willing to share on his own accord what are the things that make him unique and different, what are his hopes and dreams. So as you continue getting to know each other bit by bit, not all at once, if he continues showing up strong, if he continues being vulnerable, if he's respectful, if he's kind when you're sharing boundaries of intimacy, then that means you can grow with that man. A guy who's unwilling to respect things that you're sharing that are vulnerable for you, or who is happy to receive them, but not willing to share anything on his own, is gonna be a guy you feel miserable with. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it means the world to me and my channel, because this is how I can grow and share this message with more women. If you click like and subscribe, a lot of you are awesome viewers, but don't have subscription yet. So it's free, just click subscribe. <laughs> If you find this is helpful, please send it to somebody you love. And if you want to continue learning how you can track the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.